price ceiling and price floors, we move to the impact of taxes. Uh, let's start with a simple example. Uh, what happens if the tax is imposed on the buyers? Um, did anybody, anyone here need a major purchase recently? Something like a car or a TV or the economics book? Okay. Uh, what did you buy? A vacuum cleaner. What? A vacuum cleaner. Okay, why don't you come up here so that students don't have to turn back? Uh, so, it was a vacuum cleaner, right? Yes. How much did you pay for it? $60. $60, okay. So $60. How much were you willing to pay for it? Excuse me? Now, what was the maximum price you were willing to pay for this vacuum cleaner? I guess $70. $70, okay. So, what is the consumer surplus in this case? Yes? Okay. $10. Very good. So the consumer surplus is $10. Is the difference between the maximum price which you're willing to pay and the price you actually paid. So this $10 is your gain. And you were better off by $10. You can purchase $10 worth of other goods. And the world is richer by $10 at no one's expense. You, are, you, you, uh, you gain $10 at no one's expense. Now, did you pay taxes on it or was this inclusive of taxes? No, $60 was without tax. Um, I also paid the Ohio sales tax. Okay, so where's the Ohio sales tax? Anybody? Uh, 6%. I thought it was 7%. Yeah, it's actually more close to 7%. It's 6.75. Let's say it's 7%. So how much you ended up paying was around $64, should be, $4 tax. Now, what, did, what is your consumer surplus now? What is your consumer surplus now? $6. OK. What happened to the rest? What happened to the $4? The government got it. Absolutely. So the government got it. $4 lost in your consumer surplus was government's gain in the form of sales tax revenues. Right. Now suppose what happened if the price after the sales tax was imposed was such that it was $71. Would you still buy the vacuum cleaner? No. Why won't you buy, buy the vacuum cleaner? Because it's higher than the price that I was willing to pay. Okay. So what happens to the consumer surplus now? What happens to the surplus now? Um, your demand curve is going to shift down. Okay, so what happens to the, sur uh, the surplus which she had? When price was $64. Her surplus is going to decrease? Well, if she doesn't purchase the... Oh, it's nothing. Okay, so actually the sur there is no surplus, right? Right. So the government doesn't get anything, she doesn't get anything, the producers don't get, get anything, right? So even the price, if the price has gone up to $71, there'll be still people who will be buying it, right? But the loss of consumers like her and other consumers who cannot afford it as the price it exceeds their reservation price, the loss to them is the deadweight loss. That's the deadweight loss for, of taxes. And this loss is nobody's gain. The government doesn't gain, the producer doesn't. The consumer doesn't. Let's uh, try with the graphical example. A sales tax imposed on buyers of the vacuum cleaner results in decrease in demand. So you're right of the fact that uh, the demand curve would shift downward so to the left. Uh, the price, because of the sales tax, goes up from P star to PT, say from $60 to $71. The consumer surplus declines, the producer surplus would also decline. A part of the loss in consumer surplus and the producer surplus is offset by the government's tax gain. So the upper part uh, goes to the consumer, uh, from the consumer goes to the government, the lower part of the surplus goes from the producer to the government. But this area, this yellow region, there is no gains to anybody because of reduced trades. In order to avoid the tax, people like Sharon and many others would simply not buy the vacuum cleaner. And this loss to them constitutes what is loss. dead wet loss.